So in this video, I got a showcase of this 5x5x7. Five by five by but this is a modification that I'm definitely not the first one in the world to do. But uh, let me just talk about how previous people turned a 7x7 seven seven into a 5x5x7, five by five by which is uh, starting with generation 1. You basically use super glue to stick two outer layers like that. You use epoxy scalp. It's a two-part compound. You mix them together and a chemical reaction will start occurring, which will cause the, the, the final mixture to harden. And the epoxy scalp is used to extend the top and the bottom. Now, of course, the, the next advancement over that, instead of extending the top and the bottom with epoxy scalp, you three different uh, block to stick on top. What generation 1 and 2 have in common is that when you just glue the pieces like that, you can see the gap between the pieces and you will still need to take some of the, the filler material and stuff in the gap. And obviously, you need your filler material and the cube to all be the same colors. Change with this guy, which I'm just going to call the modification generation 3. I can't remember the actual username. What he did was he not only had extensions top and below, he actually extended the sides by a little bit as well. And he actually used that to turn the stickerless cube black. And then I did a reverse, turn the black cube stickerless. Now, the, the history of this very particular 5x5x7, five by five by this used to be one of my old mains, the MF7S. And I additionally actually failed a 5x5x7 five by five by mod like before I made this one, that was with my even older 7x7, the Shongshu. I ended up destroying that cube and throwing it away because I didn't finish it. And back in the day, that was long before I got my 3D printer, so I was like doing the generation 1 version of the mod. That was for how this thing actually turns, it's pretty nice. And yeah, I might as well just show you the whole color scheme with the checker pattern. The thing is, the contrast is not the greatest. I think the red and orange are a little bit similar, and so are the blue and green ones. Like with modern cubes, you get a much. Actually, the this this one isn't the best. I think the GTS color scheme is actually better than the WRM. You really got a dark blue against a bright green, a dark red against a light orange. This color scheme is really nice, and it's really good for contrast. Unfortunately, I can't really pick my filaments. I just pick whatever's available. It's not the most contrasting of colors. Well, the shades themselves are quite nice. Yeah. Uh, there's there isn't really a shade that's particularly ugly and the turning is also pretty nice since this is built off an MS7S so obviously this is not going to be an output GTS or output WRM in its turning quality but it's still really solid and smooth and yeah I think that's the, the main selling point of the MS7S it's just really smooth and it's actually a, a tree shell cube if you have if you know what the shell means I'm not going to talk too much about that so it's very stable of course, the extensions did lower the turning quality a bit, especially when the extensions overhang and when you turn the cube like that, they may catch against each other, as you have heard. And in even worse cases, one one extension may pull out another extension and cause it to pop out, which actually happened to me a bunch of times. In, in fact, during the example soft that you'll see later, it happened to me a bunch of times as well, and I actually, I'm just going to edit them out of the video. But when that happens, I just need to glue it back. So I do expect this problem to improve over time, like especially with, with more caps popping. Every, start, every time a cap pops and I glue it back, I do expect it to be stronger because I'll use more glue as well as... Like, progressive turning and friction should also wear down the, any accidental overhangs that I've made. I've actually designed the pieces, like the, the, the caps, to be a bit smaller than the, than the actual piece below. But then when you print things, like things don't always come out the same size and of course my hand isn't super perfect I tried to like misalign the layers and glue the cap in between like that to minimize the overhang but I still have a little bit so yeah I'm just going to proceed to the example solve so first thing I'm going to do is to start solving this thing as a 5x5 five five. so I'm going to be looking for two opposite centers in this case red and orange since uh, I'm going to use Yao because I like Yao better than reduction so I got these two and this one So I got an orange bar, I can pair this one to this one, and this one. So that's the second orange bar. And lastly these two and the third one, the third one will be down here, so I can line them up like this. Up, we should match the two. Turn this thing over, and then down we should match the third one, and I can insert this bar onto the left side. Next, what I can do here is just Okay, I have a full red bar already and I got two. Okay, so in this case, I'm a little bit lucky. I can just move this one up, which will match these two. And I can turn it around, which will bring down these two to match that two. 
and then I can just directly insert the two and I know the bar is on the left side already so I'm just going to line this center up to, to match the bar and I'm, inserted. I'm going to insert the bar like that now I'm going to go for cross edges and you actually need not do all red cross edges the important thing is that it must be sticking out because the cross will get messed up in the later part of the solve and I actually saw all three greens so I'm going to do green first before I do yellow so yeah, that's all three greens I saw the last yellow here so there we are. at the later part of the solve the cross is going to get messed up so it's actually not that important to like solve all the correct colors in fact I don't even have to obey the color scheme I'm just doing it out of yellow habits and like, I just like to do it that way uh, so red and blue, red and blue, and the third red and blue, like that. I'm going to turn these two over and insert this red and blue. And yeah, I don't, I'm just inserting it in the correct spot. So I can pair up these three yellows like that. And I got two more yellows down here. So I'm just going to put it like this and look for another yellow piece. In this case, I got two yellow pieces here. And um, okay, I see two yellows here, and I'm just just going to align this one to the position where the previous one was, and this one's on top. So I can pair up all three yellow pieces like that, and then fix the whole yellow center. And then I see what I will do is put it on this side because I know there's a green piece down here as well. So I insert this piece and bring it down, and I got T. I'm going to shoot the long part of the T to the left and then put this piece on the left as well and then yeah, yeah, match these two to this one okay, so for this one I, I'm just going to use M slice to bring this one down and this one up and yellow is here so I'm going to bring this I'm going to move this piece up such that the yellow is above the green insert the green and then move it down so now I got, I'm down to last two centers in this case uh, between blue and white, they both look about equal, so I'm just going to do blue. Uh, these two can match with this one. In this case, if this one goes up here, and it will kick this one away, I can turn this around, and bring it back down. So I got a blue bar, and I can just insert the blue bar like that. And again, for the last cross edge, just saw the red and white, so I'm Actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to misalign it first Then insert And then align this thing back And then after that I'm just going to insert the last edge like this Now for edge pairing I see, uh, I see the blue and yellow, all three of the blue and yellow edges So what I'll do is I'll put this one here and this one on top so now they're 180 degree off from each other and I'll just do R2E blue, the blue and whites. So now this one this one is in the wrong orientation compared to this one. So I'm gonna insert this piece to the back, which kicks out this one, this one. And in one single motion, so I'm gonna double turn this, I'm gonna pull this piece back to the front. So now I have all three edges here and I can match them. Next I see two orange and whites and another orange and one on top. So I'm going to insert this piece, pair it, and then insert the other piece, and pair it, and then okay, uh, green and whites maybe. Actually green and orange looks better, so I'm just going to insert this one down here. Like that, and then that will pair the green and orange. And I'm just gonna do it like that, and realign centers. Then I'm just gonna pull out the two back slots so that now there are soft edges in the two back slots, and I see the green and yellow, so I'm gonna pair this green and yellow here slice and then green and white the other green and white is actually here this is the correct one
and then the last green and white is on top, so I'm going to put it like into the slice. The alignment is a bit weird in the shape shifted form. Then insert this white and orange. Okay, in this case I got lucky and I didn't get parity, so I'm just going to flip this edge around to set them up for the last slice flip slice. I'm not going to attempt to muscle memory a 5x5 L2A out on this thing. Because the last time I tried I messed it up. Uh, so, okay. For this stage, what we are going to do is we need the correct edges for F2L. The corners can be anything that's sticking out. But the, the problem is, like, the recognition is going to be slightly harder than a 3x2. In this case, I'm going to insert this F2L at the back here. So now I've got two of them. And then this one, okay, from, from here I can actually just solve this F2L like that. And then this, the last one is here. And Okay, I know this one is wrong, so I'm going to use the, the one from the other side. So that, that solves the whole F2L, and the reason why we need the correct edges is to make this like solvable during when, after we reduce this to a 3x3x5. Three by three by I'm probably not going to attempt to muscle memory the OLL, so I'm just going to do two look. And, uh, yeah, I think COL doesn't matter at this stage, so I will just... Yeah, and I recalled the wrong OLL. Okay, so the next step is we're going to pair up all these three T-centers. So it, the logic is similar to edge pairing, so except that the slicing is going to be vertical. So in this case, I'm going to put two yellow ones. Okay, there's actually two more yellow ones at the back. So in a way, I'm going to pair up two already automatically. We want to do an inner slice R because we don't want to mess up what's on top. Like that, and I'm likewise going to take the other one out as well. One, two, no, no. Actually, I'm not 100 percent sure whether it's safe to do an R2 like that, but the thing is, always use the soft centers to do the R2s so while while the the split center is going to be doing the slices. Okay, so in this case, I got really lucky and I paired up four of them in one set of slice but usually I won't be so lucky. Uh, so I'm going to insert another blue one down here. So like that. Actually, I'm, I'm going to insert a blue one on the back. Like this. And then I'm going to pair this one. And then I'm going to replace this one. With In this case, I got lucky and I got all the same side, but it's possible to just slice one side. It's just that Due to the nature of this scramble, I did manage to demonstrate that, which is a bit of a waste. Okay, uh, so now I've got two here, and yeah, I can pair like that. And this is the tricky part. Like, how do you replace something before you slice the centers back when everything is soft? So the trick is this one. I actually learned this from Crazy Back Cuba. It's just that you, you take advantage of the interchangeability of certain pieces. So in this case. I have blue on top and green below. I want the other one to be green on top and blue below. So in this case, I'm going to insert the blue edge into this spot on the back here. So in this case, there's a blue edge here. Move it up. So now this blue below, blue on top, green below and green on top. And I can slice back. And I actually interchange pieces, but because they are the same color, the effect is not obvious. So now this is reduced to a 3x3x5 three by three by and I can start solving it like a 3x3x5. Three by three by so the first step is just to insert it just like that. But of course, now we have to take care of the middle, so we will just use one slice to insert the middle. So I'll follow the color scheme. Before green is white, so white is here, this is correct. By inserting this, I sort of destroyed it, so I will only use this slice. So in this case, yellow is the next one that I need. And then blue just happens to be soft. So I can realign the cross and like I'm by only using this slice it's like, well, like every odd number turn will destroy the inner and every even number turn will fix it back. So there's actually no worry that the, it will be completely destroyed, it's only one side. So in this case, like, like we won't move the middles, we'll just U and D slice and we'll look for this. Now 
Now we're inside the corner, so green and yellow, green and yellow will go down here. So I got one green and white, which will... Okay, in this case it's already solved and this is the wrong green and white. This, this is the orange side green and white, so it's not my one. Or next one, blue and white. In this case, I know this is wrong and the correct blue and white is down here. So what I will do is... Because the correct blue and yellow is also down here, so I'm just going to use this one to kick out this blue and yellow. And then insert this blue and yellow down here. And then insert this blue and white down there. And then I can solve the bottom layer. Next, this is just... Yeah, I'm just going to do the cuboid T perm because I already got two paired up here. And then, okay, I don't know the uh, cuboid specific U perm, but because this is actually part of the 5x5, I can cheat and do a normal U perm. Yeah, but I can't, I can't do that for the top and bottom slice because they are outside the, the internal 5x5. So this stage is just a repetition of the cuboid solve again. This is an extra layer at the top. So I've solved the cross and because the easier part for the second stage is now you can tell red and orange whether it's right or wrong. So yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna speed through this part without much explanation. Again, T perm. Actually, you can actually memorize all the cuboid PLs, and I got R perm. I'm just doing the T perm out because I didn't bother. Yeah, in this case, this is the U perm that I didn't really memorize, so I just do, did the adjacent swap out, which will swap these two and create a parity. Then I'll do this out. If you want to know what the cuboid outs are, you can for the crazy back cubers tutorial on, on the 3x3x2 